Hello again, in this episode we're looking at how to create armor or clothing and we're using a sculpting workflow. So here's my elephant again and you may have seen him before and this time I'm putting some armor on him and you can see I've already started putting pieces of armor and sculpting them already and that's what we're trying to accomplish. And I've got another piece down here but I thought I'd show you how to do it. So I'm going to delete that piece and I'm gonna create a piece that goes in here that makes up part of his headdress slash armor. So it's a similar workflow to the retopology that I've done. I'm gonna left click here so that anything I add will add there and let's shift A plane. So I've added a plane, you can also use the add menu down here and I'm just gonna move it and scale it into position. So about this big, I'm gonna rotate it around the X axis so it lines up roughly with my mesh about there and I'm gonna add a mirror modifier. Now I'm using auto mirror, which you can enable in the add-ons, but I'm just applying a mirror down the middle. The one last thing I'm going to do is in object mode, I'm just gonna make sure that my X axis is in the center. So I'm going to go up here and put it right in the center because I know my elephant's in the center and then it will be mirrored in the right way. Let's also reset the scale and rotation. Control A, rotation and scale. That way I won't have any problems when I go into sculpt mode later on. Now back into edit mode. So I've already got a mirror modifier on. I also need a shrink wrap modifier. Then it will stick to my mesh. And that's over here under deform, shrink wrap. I need to select my mesh. Now I've got a decimated elephant that I'm gonna use for this. That way my computer will run faster. And I'm going to select that as the target. And now you can see it's wrapped around the target. You can't see it very well because I need to say keep above surface. And you can set the offset so it keeps above surface. Also if you click on this little button here, it will adjust cage to modify a result. So it will show you where the points are actually going to go. Now you might think the shrink wrap would be enough for this but you do actually need to snap to objects as well. I'll show you if you don't do that, and I extrude, I can move this away from the object. It looks like it's shrink wrapping, which is great, but my edit points are still over here, so if I keep going and keep going, it actually starts to get very difficult to control where the points are. So if I'm thinking I want this area here coming up over this way, and I grab it, it's quite difficult to control because it's not snapping to the target. So I'll undo that, and what I need to do is turn snapping on. So we turn on snapping, we set it to face, and generally that does the job. You can use align rotation with snapping target and so on, but you don't need those. This setting is absolutely fine. Now if I extrude, it's sticking to the object nicely. What I can also do is add a subdivision surface modifier, and then it will smooth out, and we're there with our piece of armor. So I'm just moving these into position. This one's going to overlap the other one. And for the next stage, I will be using the multi-resolution modifier. So it's a good idea if you have equal sized faces. It's easier to use the multi-resolution modifier if they are equal. So I'm going to add another loop cut in here and GG to edge slide, double G. There's my piece of armor ready to go to the next stage for sculpting. Now what I'll do, I'll turn off the subdivision surface modifier. That was simply there as a guide. We'll be using the multi-resolution modifier eventually. I may as well set it to smooth as well, in object mode to smooth. And I'm going to apply the shrink wrap and the mirror. The shrink wrap has done its job and the mirror doesn't work very well with the multi-resolution modifier. So apply the mirror and apply the shrink wrap. Always apply your modifiers top downwards, otherwise they can get some unusual results, especially with the mirror modifier. You can get little glitches down the middle if you don't apply it first and it's not at the top. Okay, so I've got this simple shape here that was nice and easy to set up using snapping. Now I want to move it into position, so I'm going to rotate it. So I'm gonna turn snapping off. Shift tab is the shortcut for that. Let's rotate it a bit, move it out slightly, and just slot it into place. That looks fine. And the next bit is to add a solidify modifier. Just check your thickness, which way you need to go. I need to go on the negative and I'm trying to keep them all the same size. They're all roughly minus 0.018. That's great, and to see my edit, I need to press this button, I can see my edit above. Let's just check it's all in a good place. And a few bits need to move in, and that generally looks fine. What I will need to do is just add another loop cut to make sure my edges don't become too curvy. If you've used the subdivision surface modifier or the multi-resolution modifier, you'll know what I mean. So now I can apply my solidify, obviously in object mode, apply, and now lastly, set up my multi-resolution modifier, subdivide a few times, and I'm ready for sculpting. 
The great thing about this, of course, is that you've got a multi-resolution modifier, so you've already got your base mesh, and you can bake your high resolution to a low resolution base mesh. And you can see me here just sculpting away using different brushes to get different effects. And there it is. Hope that all made sense. Do comment if you've got any issues and I'll try and help. Thanks for watching.